Alrighty guys, if you were watching my old channel Trains Extreme, you would know that I got a big shipment last year of Thomas stuff from another YouTube user. And it was full of weird Japanese stuff that I haven't even had a chance to look at properly since I bought it. So, in this video, it's going to be as much of an exploration for me as it is for you. And so on to bag two of my mystery Japanese unboxing. Voila. Let's do it. So here you can see what was inside that bag. Now we've got three of these similar pullback kind of Thomas things, and we've got a collection of these little clicky wheel guys that have moving eyes. So obviously I have no idea what any of these are. So that's why in these videos I need your help. If you know what these merchandise are called, which a lot of people knew in the other part of this video, which I'll have a link to in the description, um, then they really knew what was going on when I had absolutely no idea. So if you know some of the toys that are in this video, tell me what they're called, let me know if you've got any, if you've seen them around, because in this it's just as much of an explanation for me as it is for you guys. So first let's have a look at these weird little pullback wind-up Thomas things. So as you guys can see, I've got four of these little pullback wind-up kind of figures. There's Thomas, Gordon, James, and Toby. Now, what's interesting about these guys is the way they actually work. So before we get into the individual characters, the way each one works is it's just a very, like, you know, stock standard model with these moulded on wheels. Now, the two outside ones are larger than the inside one. If we turn it over on the bottom, you can see we've got a free-rolling free rolling pair of front wheels, We've got 2005 Gulane Limited B, which I'm assuming again means Bandai. And we've got these really weird rolly wheels that seem to only roll one way, as you can see. Backwards, they do something. But forwards, I don't get anything. So I don't really know how these are supposed to work. Because it sounds like... something is winding inside of there, that we've got some kind of winding mechanism inside of there. But then, of course, as I said, when you try to pull them forward, nothing happens. But you can hear it clicking as I push it back. So I don't understand how the rolling mechanism in these ones is supposed to work. If you guys have any ideas, that would be really awesome, because I honestly have no idea how these are supposed to work. But in terms of actual characters here, we can see, look, if we look at Thomas, you can see that it's quite a, quite a nice version of Thomas. The proportions, I think, are, are quite decent. The amount of detail is quite good for the size. The only thing really lacking from these is cab windows. As you can see, none of them have got those. Um, but the rest of this is just um, sticker, a big sticker on there to give that, that detail. No painted buffers or anything on the back, but that's okay. Come around on the top, we've got the coal detailing, the inset whistles, dome, and the funnel. And as noted before, you've got these plastic wheels which don't actually turn, that just kind of look there, obviously for the purpose of being wheels. The face, which I always think is really important in a Thomas toy, is quite nice, I think. It's not the perfect face, but it defi definitely does the character justice, I think. Um, probably more so than some of the new style faces that we see on the toys today. But obviously that's up to you guys to tell me whether you agree with me on that, on that one. So this is Thomas in this range, and you can see that he's quite, quite a nice Thomas, got a decent amount of strength to him, he doesn't feel flimsy or like he's going to fall apart if I give him a bit of a twist, a bit of a pull, he definitely stays together in one piece, he's a quite a solid toy, definitely okay for kids. If you look at Gordon, his features are very similar. Now again, because he's a tender engine and squashed up, his proportions are obviously a little bit wrong, mainly because you can see we've got the tender squashed in there. And because he should be a lot wider, you can see that his face is actually the same size as Thomas's, but that means that his boiler is quite thin and narrow. So he's got a bit more cartoonish proportions. But that said, it's still definitely a passable Gordon toy, even if it's not the best one I've ever seen. Again, it has that same weird wheel function, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. We come to James. James, I think, is proportioned a little bit better, although the wheels on him look really noticeably way too large. But again, not much you can do about that because the scale of the character. 
looking around that same wheel configuration with the small one in the middle. Going all the way around so you guys can get a good look at what these things look like. A little bit of view from the top, some nice gold detailing on the funnel and the I'm um, sorry, not the funnel, the dome and the whistle. And you can see that he's actually got black tires on his little windy wheels, as opposed to the blue that was on the other figures, which is really nice. So there's James. And the last one's Toby, and he's actually quite interesting. I think he's probably got the most details out of any of them, because these are all moulded in. That grey paint on the inside of his doors is actually paint. It's not a sticker, whereas this is a sticker here. He's got details on the back. He's got something which should have been there. I'm assuming it's a cow catcher sticker, like the one that's got on the front, which has got lots of details on it. He's got the roof detailing that's standard for these Tobies. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is, though. Does anyone know what that is meant to be? That's his bell. That's his funnel. What's that? Because he's not an electric engine, so, like, what is that? I don't know. Maybe probably someone else will probably know what it is, because I really don't. And you can see that he's got a really nice face. I still think the um, the wind-ups have my favourite Toby face and front, but this is definitely very well done, if the face being a tiny little bit too small. But that's okay. What's interesting about this guy is you turn him upside down, he's actually got a red undercarriage with the weird windy wheels on them. Um, although he is from the same year, and if we look at them, they're all from that year 2005. So all from the same wave of the same range, I'm assuming. So I think these are quite a nice looking Thomas toy. My main issue is that I don't understand how the play function works. And I feel like it's not just a defect because I don't understand how I can get four figures in relatively good condition. As you can see, they've got very minor scratches and scrapes on them that all have that same problem. So maybe someone out there can tell me what the secret is to making these guys work. Making them come together as one because I don't know what it is. So if you guys know what those are, that's awesome. If not, hopefully someone else does. Maybe read through the comments and see if you can figure it out, because these are definitely a mystery to me, and that's something I love looking at these toys, because they're so strange, but also so cool to have, because they're so different to anything I've ever seen before. But let's get them out of the way and get onto the ones that make a little bit more sense, which are these bad boys here. Well, these were the second ones that came out of that second, that plastic freezer bag that these guys are in, um, grouped together because they were kind of similar, I guess. And these guys make a bit more sense to me, and I think are definitely a better toy on multiple levels. So as you can see, I've actually got quite a lot of these ones, and I've got a lot of Jameses, so you never know, in a future giveaway, maybe, just maybe, some of these could end up, some of these exclusive, rare, kind of Japanese items could end up at your door. But you'll have to keep watching my channel to find out, won't you? All right, so let's have a look at these guys. And as always, let me know if you know what they are, because I have no idea. So as to be expected, we start with our little favorite engine, Thomas. Now, these guys, um, you can see, I think are a much better toy on, on the multiple levels. The first being that they've got real wheels. And that, to me, is always a way to win my heart in terms of a Thomas toy. I feel like... Real wheels beat out on fake wheels every time, which is one of the reasons I really liked the Ertl toys, was because they had the um, real wheels and, like, you know, different sized wheels as opposed to Taken Plays, which kind of bastardize the wheel configurations a little bit in some of their models, especially in the new 2014-2015 revisions. So these guys have got a rolly wheel at the front and the middle, which is just free-spinning, and they've even got a piston on there, which is added bonus points. It's connected to a wheel... It's got that same kind of traction tyre as we saw on these ones, hence why I think they're somewhat similar, although I don't know how. And this one's also got a clickiness to it. It goes forwards and backwards, which made me think something was wrong, but in fact, if we come around to Thomas's face, you can see that clickiness is the gear mechanism in the eyes, which I've always really liked. I thought that's a very cool thing. I think Bachman really hit it on the head, implementing that into the electric models. Um because they do look really, really cool. You can see that Thomas's eyes go very far to the... Well, his left, but our right. Um, but not so far to the other side. But that's okay. I think it's quite nice. They've also got a keychain hanger, these toys. So I'm assuming you're meant to, you know, carry them with them and let's go places. But um, this Thomas is obviously missing his. Some of the other ones have them, some of them don't. But that'd be easy to fix if you wanted to take him to school with you. Although I feel like he's way too cool to be sitting on a bag getting bashed around. Because I know I destroyed my earrings. I did that too. 
What's interesting is these guys are 2004, so they're actually predating the other ones, but have a lot better play function in my mind. And as you can see, they're a lot better detailing. Um, you can see that these guys have got the all-important cab windows on there, which are just stickers, but that's okay. They've got the details on the back, they've got the moulded buffers on the front and the back as opposed to just the painted ones. As I said, they've got the wheels, and these ones, they are metallic ones apparently, because as you can see I have a metallic Thomas. And I think this is one of the best looking metallic Thomas items I've ever seen. A lot of the times I find the paint looks a little bit too off blue, it looks a little bit fake, a little bit cheap, whereas I think this darker blue really works and really pops. It would be nice to see the wheels in that same colour, but, you know, I'm not really going to complain. So I'm quite a fan of this little version of Thomas and these little figures. But obviously I've got more than just Thomas, so we'll get him out of the way and bring Percy. And you can see Percy's quite a similar design, and again, he's got a really good face, which I didn't talk about in Thomas, but Thomas, I thought, had a really good face. Um, you can come around, he's got those extra details the other ones just didn't have, even down to the little brake cylinder bits and pieces, whatever that is in there, that Percy detailing. Again, he's got the clicky eyes. His eyes are a little bit more even than Thomas's. And again, I do really like the way that turns out. And I think his proportions are awesome and he looks very cool. Works very well. The next one I've got is Gordon. Now I've got him in a metallic. His proportions are better, I feel, than on this one, mainly because I said he's taller, so everything feels like it's in a better shape. Um, I also think the way they've done the wheels by spreading them out on this one, because he is actually a touch longer than the Thomas is, and so that allows him just to get that little bit more grandeur in there. His face again is awesome, very very good face on that one, I do like it, I like the eye function as I keep saying. The wheels are the same configuration, there's no speciality in the wheels, but again that piston really works for me in the same way it does in the wind-ups. As you can see, he's got the chain, and it's one of these easily detachable chains, and naturally easily lost chains, so that explains where the other ones went. And again, he's got that really nice blue colour that I think a lot of metallic Thomas items don't get right, although feel free to disagree. If you prefer that lighter blue that they sometimes do, then let me know. Um, but I really think that this, this Gordon is much nicer than that other one. Moving on to the only road character I've got from this series, which is Bertie, and I think he, again, actually looks really nice. I think the proportions are done well, so that he's short, he's kind of square, he's kind of boxy, but I think it really works out for him as a figure, which is, or a character, which is really, really nice. Again, the eye function works very, very well. The face is really nice. The wheel, that exposed wheel, how it's done is really good. The cutaway. I think they just captured the look of the engines very, very well in this series, as opposed to the other one, by giving that, that little bit of uniqueness, and as you can see, he works fine, just like the others. The Jameses, we well, better have a look at all in one go, because there's quite a few of them. Now, I need to say that they are actually all, like, the same. You've just got two metallic ones and three of the not metallic ones. So if we look at one of these guys, just so he doesn't have that thing to get in the way, James's face is the only one I'm not 100% sold on. I don't think there's anything. It's not bad. It's just not quite as Jamesy as the other ones are, possibly. Um, but that just might be me being really picky. Um, I think that his proportions are very respectable. He's the same length as Gordon, hence he can have those extra spaced out wheels. Which look a little bit funny if you think about that's where his tender is. But you can't let it worry you that much when they've done so much else right on this. Um, the gold paint on the dome is really nice, which I don't think I mentioned when we looked at Percy and Thomas, but they all have gold paint on there, not just yellow. It's gold, shiny paint, metallic, and it looks really cool. So even just the red version of this James looks really nice, and I don't think he has quite the proportion issues that this one does down the bottom there, because you can see that this one is just a cut-off big block. Um, whereas this one has got a little bit more gappiness to it because that comes in and the wheels are there. So I think that looks really nice now. As you say, these ones are the same. Then we've got the metallic version, which I think, again, just looks fantastic. That red, it's showing up a decent amount darker, more like a maroon on camera, but I promise it does actually look red in real life. Um, and you can see that these, again, this all the same year, so all in the same kind of wave, all the same kind of era. 
um, like some of the other toys we've looked at, which have come from different eras and ages. Again, like just a really, really nice compact version of James. It's a decent size. It's got a very good feel to it, as they all do. They don't feel like they're going to break and fall apart on you. Um, but as you said, as I, we noted, you've got these on them, so they're ready to take around. So these guys are definitely very cool. Alrighty, guys. So looking at both of these different similar series, what do you guys think about them? I personally think that these ones are really cool collectibles and something that I would think that a Thomas fan, if you want to add to your collection, definitely have a look at picking these up and collecting them full time, which I would love to do, but I don't have enough space and there's too many other Thomas and Transformers and Macklin and Doctor Who things to buy. But I think these guys are definitely the win over these ones because even if I'm someone in the audience can enlighten me to how the function on these is supposed to work I think the extra level of detail and just the extra attention to how they look and how they present and how they feel in these front ones here the keyring ones means that these guys are much better toys not only to give to people but also just to have on display on your shelves and so I think these guys are a definite win in this one and I'd love to know what they're called so if you know what they are as I keep saying please let me know but in saying that, I feel like these back ones, if they were a wind-up slash pullback kind of engine, could have great play potential um, for racing, pulling back, you know, because they're that big, get more chunky size than your little wind-ups. They're not quite as fiddly. They're a bit more robust. You could throw them in your bag and, you know, you know, take them out to dinner so the kids can play, like, in the kids' area or with them or something because you don't have to worry about breaking bits off and all that kind of stuff. So I think both of them have their pros and cons. I think these ones definitely win out, though, from my perspective. But, of course, that's just what I think. So let me know what you think. And let me know if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you liked it. I'm trying to do some different things, trying to mix it up a little bit, keep it a bit the same. That's what you when you have a new channel, right? So make sure that you stick around, do all the things you do on YouTube, subscribe. Check out my old channel, Trains Extreme, if you haven't seen that already, because I've got heaps of reviews of more train stuff, Transformer stuff, Malcon stuff, Doctor Who stuff, everything on there. And obviously, if you've come from Trains Extreme, or you're just new, stick around for a little bit longer, because there's going to be plenty more of this stuff coming your way. But as I have to say in the end of every video, thanks for watching. That's all we've got time for from Extreme Trains.